things I love to say to you guys when I get to see you guys here. Number one, you are loved. Number two, you are appreciated. And number three, you are what? Family. So welcome, family. Welcome. We're going to have an awesome service. Uh, let me go ahead and pray this service in. Amen? Okay. Lord God, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God, for another wonderful day, Lord God. That we have life and life more abundantly, Lord God. And even though we have our problems and we have our issues and we have these things, we want to say thank you, Lord God, that we still have an opportunity to worship you and to see the miracles happen in our lives, Lord God. That our faith will grow. That our faith will continue to grow as you continue to work in our lives, Father God. We know that you are good and you loved us. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive the word. And let's, Father God, we want to worship you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, turn around, give somebody a big hug. Turn around, give somebody a handshake. Turn around, give somebody a high five. Come, welcome to church on the street. Sunday evening service. Thank you guys for the worship. Thank you guys for leading us in. The Holy Spirit is in the house. The Holy Spirit is just going to be in this place. And then Walt turned around and asked, asked the officer if he could pray for her. And so he walked up to the fence and put his hand up, and she put her hand up and he prayed, and she just started crying. And then as we were walking down the walkway, the officer said, um, that lady's very special. She's on death row. But because of her behavior, she's been down, what did I say? I it, finally looked her up, I knew, I recognized her face. And there's only two people, I think, two girls on death row. So I recognize who it was, but Samantha's been down, what did I say, eight or ten, eight years or something? But to joy the Lord, and then I did a little Google search, well not Google, but I found out from DOC that she's been attending church services. So we got a sister in the Lord. Yeah. That, was a, that was a divine appointment because you know, you we went through two child, you know, checkpoints and then sit and go walk all the way down there. In the kitchen, there was no air, no swamp, no nothing. They, they have to be locked down, but they're in air-conditioned rooms. So they opted to stay in the air-conditioned rooms. You know what's amazing? I was walking by, just looked at her, and I could see the God, a piece of God in her face. You know, I want to tell you a secret. You can't hide it. You can talk a good talk. 
about being a Christian. I'm going to tell you something. You can't manifest that radiance. It's got to be God. Yeah. And I mean, really, it's really, really neat. You see all these things happen. Because in the last days, you know, said he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Amen. Okay. Now I got something graciously to say to the church. How many want to be a doer of the word? Wait, 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 wait. Doer of the word is not a hero and see if you don't sell. Well, this will probably blow you away. So many of us look like the Bible says, you know, you look in the mirror and see what you look like, and then forget about it. When you go away, forget about it. I heard a sermon today that just shattered me. Colonel Fenner. You know what the, the preacher was talking about? How crazy it's getting. There's people that are voted in to federal offices. They're men claiming they're women. And they show pictures of them. And there's a guy, a big old guy like this, you know, dressed up with them. High places! And there was another guy that had a mustache and his haircut, and he had women's hair on. And I'm thinking, my God, am I looking at, you know, am I hearing this and forgetting about it, like, you know what I'm talking about? We need to do something. You know what we need to do? First of all, pray. 714, my people are called by my name, home self, pray, seek my face, turn away the good ways. Then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. We need to vote. I'm not quite sure what uh, Pastor Juan wants me to talk about, but uh, yes, the vote. <laughs> so, uh, my wife Mary and I are both precinct committee members for the Republican Party. Um, one of the things that the Republican Party tries to do uh, that's a little bit different from the Democratic Party is we try to vote people who are normal. Uh, when I say normal, people who are normal sexual orientation. Uh, you know, who hold jobs, who want jobs, who want to work. I'm not going to speak against the Democratic Party because there's a number of people in the Democratic Party that are fine, fine individuals. But if you take a look at what is the party platform, the party platform is hugely different than that of the Republican Party. Uh, right now, how many people know what the Surgeon General is? Everybody know what the Surgeon General of the United States is? The Surgeon General is the head of all of our health services in the United States. Every time you go see a doctor, they're impacted by the Surgeon General. The current Surgeon General played football with General Mark Milley back when they were in high school. He wears a dress, and he's now claiming that he's a, he's a woman. We have a problem. We have a problem in Washington, D.C. We have people who have moved up into positions of power who really shouldn't be there. Amen. What did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for? Anybody? Men were chasing men and women were chasing women, right? Unnatural acts, Paul calls it in Romans. Guess what we've got going on in Washington, D.C. today? It's all over the place. And it goes all the way up to the White House. So I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but you ought to really take a look and think. Take, take a look and think. What does each party stand for, and what do you stand for as a Christian? Vote and align with that. And I will tell you that there are sometimes you might find a Democrat who's better than a Republican. If that's the case, vote for him. But if it's not the case, vote the other way. I will tell you right now, we have a problem in this country, and if it doesn't get solved, the Lord is going to withdraw his favor from us. He's already started to do it. So we have this problem, and, and the people who can solve it are right here in this room. Amen. It's not me. It's you. It's you. It's talking to your friends and saying, hey, this is wrong. Stand up for what's right. I tell the disciples all the time, you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Not because you like it, not because it's pleasant. Most of the time, the right thing to do is an unpleasant task. Shut up and do it. That's what the Bible says. Shut up and do it. 
You know the difference between right and wrong. Do right, avoid wrong. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How many of you have never voted? Then you suppose you know you should be. How many of you, come on, how many of you are going to vote this election? I'm waiting. How many of you going to vote, Kenny? Now, I understand there's still ways if you, you're not registered, you get registered. Amen? Now, here's the deal. If we just look in the mirror and just look around and see, you know, well, well, somebody else will take care of it. You know, it's not up to me. You forget about it. You kid yourself. Yeah. It's time for us to. What do you want to say? Be doers of the Lord, not hearers only. I mean, God wants us to stand firm. Don't you, don't you think so? Yeah, now, it's not. It's, I said, no, this is my personal opinion. One of the greatest, I think, that has ruined us more than anything else is abortion. Okay? Now, if we don't even talk about it, we have it all, we, we could have voted this out a long time ago, but we just can sit back and watch. Well, you know, I don't really want to get involved. Maybe I don't understand this, understand that. It's about time for us to take a stand. But when I saw that today, I saw those pictures, and I didn't realize how bad it was until I heard that man preach. Just listen to the colonel today. It's normal. We don't know about it, but we can do our part. We can pray, but we need to vote. How many of you have got? Come over here. I, I have to say something. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know if if you all know this, but uh, when the general election comes up in November, there is going to be, I think it's an amendment to our state constitution, and it's about abortion. And they're talking about giving, allowing abortions up to nine months. They're talking about parents not even knowing a child in school, your daughter in school can get an abortion, the teacher can go take them to get an abortion, and you will never know as, an, as a parent. They're talking about abortions being done by an, an optometrist, a physical therapist, not even a doctor. And the way they're gonna phrase it on the ballot is they're gonna say, well, it's because, you know, it's, it's all about uh, protecting women. It's women's rights. It's wellness. And it's not. It's not. They're taking, it's murder. And they're taking, it, they're taking a human life. Now, if, if a woman has a, a medical reason and you have to terminate the pregnancy or the baby, there's something wrong with the baby, those abortions, whatever you want to call it, um, will still be allowed, but they're taught, but they are talking about taking a baby up to nine months. So I please, please vote. We have to vote these evil people out of office. Even the state of Arizona, we have a big problem. And my husband said, you know, as he said, look at the platform of the Republican Party and what they stand for, and the Democratic Party, and then vote the will of God. It's yeah. very easy. It's not a hard issue. It's a very easy issue. It's very easy to choose what is the right thing to do. So please, when you see that amendment, please look at it carefully. It's not about protecting women. It's about killing babies. So please remember that. Vote no on that. It's evil. We can't allow that in the state of Arizona. I don't think the husband's wife knows our problem. We got to vote. Yes. How many voted in the last election? How many didn't? Why? Okay. okay. I understand all that. But you ever try to you can get a turn overturn? Fine. Now, how many of you you can do it if all you have to do is register? That's it. See, what I'm trying to say is, we're sitting back doing nothing. It's time for us. Now, if you can't, you really can't vote, I mean, you know, because whatever. You can pray. But in your heart, you say, you know what? We just need to fight this thing out. Now, if I can't vote, I'm going to register. I'm not going to put lying to myself. I'm going to kid myself. It's time for me to make my stand. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this. I shouldn't. 
And I'm not talking about political parties. You know what a, I'm not going to say it. You know what a Democrat is? Anybody have an idea what a Democrat is? It's the Republican Party. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a good praise. especially for us in here, if you have the opportunity to vote, vote. You know why? Because half of us are felons and we can't vote. So we need you to go vote. Amen. Uh, and those of you guys that have the opportunity to restore your rights and do that, uh, I think Ms. Terry has a, a lot of information that would help you to get your rights restored if you wanted to do that. Uh, just you know, give the office a call and she'll give you some resources. Uh, there is an opportunity for a lot of us uh, to get your rights restored and start voting, okay? Um, so it's important. But you know what we need to do more than anything else? Pray. We need to pray. We need to go to the source. We need to go straight to the source. Because regardless of what we do, and he's got all things working together, right? And it says, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will look upon them and heal their land right? and give them favor. So that's what we need to do. All right. So my job right now is to remind you to continue to pray. Join us in prayer. Let's continue to intercede for these, uh, these prayers, these important prayers. So let's intercede for this extended prayer list that we have, okay? I want to give you an invitation to fill out a prayer card if you need prayer for a situation. If you need prayer for somebody, uh, if, uh, just fill out a prayer card. That, uh, Pastor David Torres back there will have a prayer card ready for you. Put it in our offering basket and we'll put you on the extended prayer list. Uh, if you're watching us from home, send in your prayer request uh, via online or call the office. We'll put you on the extended prayer list. And what we need right now is people to raise their hands People that say, I got five minutes, I got ten minutes, I got fifteen minutes, to go ahead and go to this list and pray and intercede for these people. So please raise your hand if you can take one of these extended prayer lists home. And Scott is back there passing them out. Usually my wife will be passing them out, but uh, today we're going to pray for her also. She's going through some migraines. Uh, you know, she's going through a lot of stress this week through work and things going on at home. So let's just keep her in prayer also, okay? We love you, Journey. Hope you're, yes. you feel better right now, starting right now as we continue to pray. We're going to pray for you. And we're also, we also have other needs. Uh, I know that some of you guys came in here with some needs. Uh, we do have our extended, or I'm sorry, our weekly prayer list. And we always pray for these people that are dealing with cancer, okay? We always, deal, we always want to pray for our ministry needs also. So I'm going to uh, pray for these. For the, for the prayer list, and I'd like for you guys to just join me with a loud amen when I finish uh, as we come into agreement together, okay? All right. Lord God, we have people that are dealing with cancer, Lord God. And we know how awful that could be and how painful and debilitating it could be, Father. So we ask you for miracles. We ask you for healing, peace, and comfort for Beverly Aronson, Mark, Sandy, De Medina, Rich, Rochelle, Seely. Cynthia Salaya, Sharon Mankey, Mike Burns, and Pat, and anybody else who's dealing with cancer who's watching us from home or their family members, Lord God. We have ministry needs and we want to raise up the Prairie Bow, uh, and the county jails and the inmates and all the, the, the jail facilities around the state, the prisons and the, uh, and, and the, the, um, the prisons and the jails, Lord God, that are, that are going through, uh, through these issues, Lord God. We pray for strong disciples and for revival in the jails and the prisons around the state. And for the soup kitchen, we just continue to pray for, for the people to be open to the gospel, that they, they make a decision to, to make a change in their life and joining us, Father God, in harmony and love with, also harmony and love with the co-workers. Then we continue to pray for the Church on Street alumni. Um, we continue to pray in the name of Jesus for deliverance and salvation for Dallas' and mom and their stepdad, uh, Renee Gomez, Tina, Riley, Danielle, Ke Candace, Ashley McCray, Anthony, and Ms. Barr's family, Lord God. We pray in Jesus' name for our mission, that it just keep us expanding, Lord God, in the discipleship program, for fruitfulness and harmony there at the, at the facility, and for church on the street, that we continue to be alive in Christ.
for strong ministry to men and women, and for passion, passion for evangelism, Father God. It's all about souls. We pray in the name of Jesus for Pastor Jesse in Nicaragua, Dr. Fais Robin in India, Pastor Ramon and Ms. Teresa in Nogales, Pastor Ronnie Gray and his family, Lord God, and all the men, women, and children under their care. We lift them up to you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Did anybody come in here with a need? <laughs> we have needs. And we have an awesome God that always provides, that is always watching us, right? It's always caring for us. So we have needs. I'm going to pray for you today. pray. Lord God, thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity to reach out to you right now, Father. God. Together, in you right now. I just want to pray for all these people, Father, that came in with anxieties and worries about finances and about just their loved ones and just the things that are happening in their lives, Father God, that they just remember, Father, that you always watch over us. You always, nothing comes to us that first doesn't come through you, Lord God. So I just pray that they go home today in comfort and peace, knowing that you're watching over them, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray and everybody say it. Amen. 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 Let me pray one more time because I did want to bring this up. Um, I do have a prayer report, a prayer, praise report. Uh, John's father is, uh, you don't have to come up. John's father is, uh, he's in rehab, so he's doing really good now, right? He's starting to recover. And also, uh, we like to pray, continue to pray for John uh, for spiritual healing. Uh, he needs to, he needs prayer. And I also want to lift up my wife and her sister because we're going through this uh, transition into into sobriety. I call it transition into sobriety because I believe it's going to happen, okay? For my wife's sister. Um, and for my wife as they're going through this uh, as she's going through this stressful time. Father God, I want to just pray in the name of Jesus and continue to pray for John for and his spiritual needs that he be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit of God, that he let the Spirit guide him. And I'd like to pray in the name of Jesus for my wife and also for her sister, Lord God, that, that God, that you just just touch her heart. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. That she will make a decision, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we know that anytime you touch somebody, it is good. Thank you, Father. We know you would do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God Almighty. Let's give the Lord a good praise. Right, let's go ahead and transition into announcements. First announcement. My brother Dan. Anybody know Dan Burns? Okay, well, Dan Burns, he is uh, our head of our, him and Pastor Remington head up our Mighty Men of Valor. Okay? Uh, we're going to meet tomorrow, right next door at 6 p.m. So we have our, every second Sunday of the month, we have the Mighty Men of Valor. Second, every second week of the month? Every second Monday of the month. That's Sunday, I'm sorry. Every second Monday of the month. We have the Mighty Man of Valor uh, right next door at 6 p.m. There will be food, there will be worship, and somebody's going to bring the word, okay? So we, you'll be spiritually spiritually fed also, okay? So Dan's already confirmed it'll be right next door tomorrow. So if you have time to come, if you're watching us from home, if, if you didn't get a chance to come in today and you have a chance to come in tomorrow, make sure you join us. So that'll be tomorrow at 6 p.m. I'm sorry? Every, all the men, yes. And if I mean, if a man comes with his wife or his girlfriend or whatever, or his loved one, that's fine. You can cut. Not a big deal. Uh, but it's a mighty man of valor class, okay? I just want to remind you guys. Okay. All right. Uh, we also we're celebrating a birthday today. We're gonna celebrate it today. We're gonna sing happy birthday. But we have a very special pastor. Celebrating a birthday on the 13th, which is what two days from now on Tuesday. Okay, so I just want to say, first of all, Pastor Randy, we love you. You are our family. You've always been our family, and there's not enough words for me to say in five hours that are good for Pastor. There's too many good words that I can say about Pastor Randy. But right now, we just want to sing happy birthday to you. Yeah. Okay? Join me in singing happy birthday to Pastor Randy. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Randy. Happy birthday to you. You know, um, Pastor Randy's just 
just a special part of Church on the Street. Uh, he brings a lot of knowledge, he brings a lot of experience, and he brings a lot of heart, and he brings a lot of passion to Church on the Street. So we just want to say we love you and happy birthday. Okay. Anybody else celebrating a birthday this week? Not next week, but the week after. We'll get you. But anybody celebrating a birthday? Dad! Dad! Celebrating a birthday. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, let's hey, let's let's sing happy birthday to Dennis, yeah? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dennis. Happy birthday to you. He's called Dad, right, Dennis? You met him in this anymore. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, won't, you wouldn't say he's a menace? <laughs> anyway, but, hey, look, thank you guys. Uh, if you do have an opportunity to fill out a, uh, a, one of the cards that has your information, you can put your birthday day. You don't have to put the year if you don't want to, but you can also put your birthday day and month, and we'll always make sure we uh, remind you when it's your birthday, because some of you guys forget, right? I forget when it's my birthday. I don't want nobody to know, but somehow they find out. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, bring up our praise and worship team one more time. Thank you guys for doing the worship. Uh, that was an awesome job. I mean, you guys, every time you're here, you, you just usher in that, that Holy Spirit power, man. It just feels so good to, to hear you guys. So thank you guys for being here. And I just want to thank everybody watching us from home. I want to thank everybody that's uh, sending in their offerings and their tithes through the online uh, option. And they're sending, some people send their tithes and their offerings and their love gifts from other states. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to just, you know, remind everybody here that I, we know that sometimes our finances get a little crazy, right? That, I mean, we, we, we sometimes struggle with these things. But, you know, let's have comfort in knowing that God has got it all working together. You know, a lot of times we think it's just it's, it's a money thing, but... And God can bring so many blessings in so many ways that we don't, we can't even imagine, you know. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid today to, you know, to just to say, God, I know that I'm hurting, or I, but I, I know that you've got it all working together. So thank you guys for your contribution. Thank you for your offering. Thank you for your gifts. Uh, and I'm going to pray for you right now. Lord God, I want to thank my brothers and sisters right, that are giving right now. Just bless them, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, for having faith faith in you that you got it all working together and I do pray for those who are struggling with their finances also Lord God that they continue to have faith in you Lord God and that they just leave it at your feet Father and just continue to not be anxious about these things in Jesus name I pray Amen 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 the people that know their God can sense and feel and understand that God's work, He's going to build His church. Amen. And you know what? The people that don't know their God think they know their God. No. Tell everybody else they know their God, don't know Him, they ain't going to make it. Amen. Amen. You know, I think we got a great leader that God raised up here, Pastor Dixie. I mean, he's got some battles and struggles and on and on and on. You know, week after week, he's still got a job, he's got other things going on. But he seems to come here with the joy of the Lord in yes, his amen. strength. Yes. Isn't he a good example? Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's get him up here. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Walt. And thank you for being the prime example of what a pastor should be. Right? Amen. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm just so... I don't want to get these water confused. <laughs> This one's mine, okay? If you see me grabbing this one, say, no! Okay, this one's mine. I'll put this one down here. Okay. Um, thank you, Pastor Wong. Okay? Uh, you know, I fell in love with Church on the Street because I saw a man doing what, what I believe a pastor should be doing. Amen. Okay? Amen. Jesus, this is what Jesus did. What did he do? He discipled man. He came to... Preach the gospel, but he got a bunch of thirty dozen kind of guys. Anybody ever watch the thirty dozen? A bunch of fishermen and you know uh, 
misfits and he decides to disciple these men other than Luke who was a physician and Matthew was a tax collector the rest of them were just a bunch of misfits right dudes that cussed and probably I mean come on what a fisherman do probably cuss and talk about women and different stuff but he decided these are the guys that I'm going to disciple and then what did he teach them to do to go out to introduce and do outreaches. Because that's what they did. You know, they, they went to, to, <laughs> exactly, right? I want to say thank you, Pastor Walt. Thank you, Pastor Walt, for being an example of what I really believe a shepherd should be, right? The shepherd of a pastor. Uh, I call Pastor Walt the Caleb of Phoenix, you know? For me, he's the Caleb of Phoenix, right? Don't, don't take the land. Amen? Amen. Okay, so I want to say just thank you, Pastor Will, for giving me this opportunity. You know, um, we try our best, and we know that God has got, um, he's got much, much more, much more ahead of us, a lot of work for us ahead of us, uh, but right now we're going to do whatever we can to build up this church, to build up uh, disciples, and to continue to build up church on the street, and I, I, I know, and Beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we will have a 400 500 bed facility one day. We will have it. Okay? We will have it. I know that. I mean, God's shown me in dreams and visions, and I know that it's going to happen. But right now, this is what we have. This is what we're going to uh, work with, and we're going to disciple men and women, and we're going to continue to do this. Okay? All right. What message last week Mom. by Pastor Randy? <laughs> Still, this whole week I was still thinking about his message. Um, arete, right? Arete, the Greek word uh, for virtue. Um, moral integrity. Moral character. A strong moral character, right? And this just fits in right with discipleship. Man, I was thinking about that, you know, during the week. And as I'm, I'm trying to think for a message. And I'm like, Lord God, what do I preach this week? And... It's Friday already, and you haven't given me anything. And I'm still thinking about Pastor Randy's message and how good it was. And, you know, um, it just, I couldn't get anything. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to think about this. You know, Pastor Randy preached this awesome message, and it's moral character and virtue. And, you know, uh, what can I do to, first of all, I need to be real with myself and say, well, you know, um, there's there's some portions or there's some parts in your life where you're lacking that moral character. You know that. Ugh, I have to come clean with myself, with me, right? So how do I do this? How do I identify what I need to work on? You guys are smart people. Come on, you know what it is, right? We're, you're very smart people. Every single person in here knows exactly where we lack moral integrity. Whether it be in, in unforgiveness, um, you know, any other things, right? Um, we know. We know where we need to work in our, in our moral character and identify what we need to work on. Okay? What is it that keeps us from that arete, from that virtue? What is it that keeps us away from that integrity and that moral character. How do we how do we build ourselves up to get there, right? How do I deal with this? How, what do I need to do? Well the first thing we need to do is confront our sin and our temptation. That's right. Confront it. That's right. I don't want to do that. No, that's that's what we gotta confront it. Are we going to be Christians or not? Are we going to Are we going to read the Bible and just you know go through the pages like a regular book, or are we going to actually read it and ask God for insight, understanding, and strength to live by what Jesus was saying? Are we going to do that? Because that's what I want to do. Nowhere in the sense says you have to be perfect. No. Don't say that. You know, I was very legalistic. Very legalistic. I had to do everything by the book. Everything 
by the law. La, 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 la. And if it's not done la, 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 then, you know, I have such a hard time. I used to. But something got into here, and, and, and I keep remembering, you don't have to be perfect. But you do have to confront your temptation and your sin. You have to deal with it to build up that moral character. Okay? And like I said, you're smart people. You know what it is. You don't have to shout it out or tell anybody if you don't want to. Right? But you have to confront it. Right? And you know what I recognize is that it's God who wants us to do this. You know, often times that we think it's our parents or the pastor that wants to no, know. It's God who wants you to do this. Okay, let me prove it to you. Isaiah 118. Pastor Walt, do you know the scripture? You should, let me share it with these guys. These ladies and these gentlemen, even the kids. Isaiah 118. I believe this is what God wants us to do. And you know what? Today I'm gonna I'm gonna give off my my bookmarks. They're little cool cards. I'm gonna give them out. There you go. I'm gonna give off my bookmarks today, so I don't go back and forth. This way, I know I'm done with this side. Okay, look at look what Isaiah 118 is saying to the adulterers. And in the Bible, he calls this he calls this nation. A promiscuous nation. I don't want to say the word that, that starts with pro, but that's what he was calling the nation. You're prostituting yourself. Right? What's he said? But he said, come now, let's sell this. Let's confront your sin, confront it, confront it. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are, they are like red crimson, I will make them as white as wool. And if you only obey me, you will have plenty to eat. But if you turn away and refuse to listen, you will be devoured by the sword of your enemies. I, the Lord, have spoken. I believe the Lord wants us to confront our sin, our temptation, and settle it. Let's settle this, right? We want to build up to this virtue, this high integrity moral character. Okay? So this is this is going to be my message. How do we confront confronting our sin temptation? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, help me to encourage and not discourage. Help me to speak truth. Help me to, Father, be guided right now by the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that I might reach someone. And Father, that I myself understand what you're trying to tell us, Lord God, through these scriptures that you gave me and through, these, through this sermon, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to preach to myself. Right? I think we preach best when we preach to ourselves. Like, I'm trying to tell JC this stuff. That's true. But if you hear what I'm going through, you might relate. Because I think we have some stuff that we can relate to. Like, like, I can't vote. You know, Pat, like Pastor uh, was asking, he said, man, I wish I could go vote. You know, I already know what I would vote for and how I would vote, but I can't. And then part of the reason is that right now I don't have my rights to store, you know. But uh, Pastor Walt was uh, saying, can you do this? And I said, yeah, and it's going to take a lot of work, but I am, I'm going to try and get my rights to store, and I'm going to try and do this. It might take some time. <laughs> Time, but I really believe that God, God will help me to do it. And Amen. Yes. Man, I always say this, guys. As long as you're breathing, anything's possible. Amen. Right? Amen. right? Amen. As long as you're breathing. It's when you don't breathe anymore that now, now you're, you're going to be somewhere else, right? But as long as you're breathing, anything is possible. Amen. Okay. So... Let's confront this. Um, first of all, is there anybody in here that <coughs> didn't sin this week? Um, By a show of hands. <laughs> 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 
Okay. We need to confront this. <laughs> I didn't see too many hands. Pastor Carl's not here, but Pastor Carl might have had, had his hand up. Uh, <laughs> anybody in here who did not sin this week? Hey, I'm in the right place, man. I'm fixing the right message. Right? right? Well, let's see. What does Scripture say about that? we got to confront this, first of all. Let's recognize this, right? And, you know, you can use this out there when you're out there preaching to these people on Mill Avenue because a lot of them think that, well, I haven't sinned or I'm, I'm a do-gooder. But let's, let's confront it with Scripture. Let's go to John. Little John. First John. First John. One eight. Who said that? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, you get a, you get a bookmark. Yeah. All right. All right. So first John one eight. John John's learning. Praise God. All right. If we claim that we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves. It's a good thing nobody raised their hand except for Red right there. But he was trying to tell me something, right? He was trying to tell me something. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves. And we're not living in the truth. Man, you guys are honest. Nobody raised their hand. That's awesome. I mean, it's awesome that, that we realize it's not awesome that we sin, you know. But it's awesome that we didn't sin by saying, no, I did not sin. You know what I'm saying? We'd be lying, right? Because it says here, but if we confess our sins to him, there's a good part. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. This is the awesome part right there. We just confess, but we gotta confess in a righteous heart. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's a right, it's a it's a type of confession that is not a um they're not messing with this confession. It's it's coming from your heart. You're repentant. It's a, you know what I'm saying? You're saying, God help me not to do this again. I'm confessing my sin. This is what I did. Help me, Lord. And if we claim that we have not sinned, we're calling God a liar. We don't want to do that. And showing that, that His Word has no place in our heart. So that's, we got to confront that first, right? And we need to know that there are things we need to confess. God, I have this unforgiveness for this person at work. Lord, I need to confront that right now. Help me, Father. Show me. Help me. And you know what? It is settled. He will show you. He will lead you. And you will feel that weight coming off because the forgiveness will come into your heart. I've done it many times. There was a guy at the dream center that I couldn't stand. And oh my goodness, this guy was always messing with me and saying this about me and doing this. And I gotta forgive this guy. I mean, I read First John. Pastor Kevin Bishop said, "Hey, see, go ahead and read First John thirty days and see if it doesn't change your life." And man, I read that, and halfway through, I was already, you know, asking God to help me forgive this other man and not want to fight him, you know? Because First John, the book of John, little John, is all about love, the love of man, you know. And I can say this as a man: I can love another man. You know, I can say that. But see, when, when a man loves another man, you're there to pray for him, to strengthen him, to encourage him, to guide him, to pray for his well-being. You're loving another man. You see what I'm saying? I can say that as a man, right? You, the other kind of love is different. You don't want to pray for that kind of love, right? The, the, the worldly love. But the, the godly love is what, we're, what John is talking about, right? So I prayed for this guy, and you know what God started to show me? We started going, even though him and I had odds, we didn't get along with each other, we both were, were bumping heads. When we went to outreaches, I saw this man uh, helping these homeless people. Actually, we were at the reservation, and he, he was hanging out with the kids, and he was, you know, like, really good with the kids, playing basketball with them. He was really awesome, and man, God started to soften my heart towards this man, and I saw the goodness in this man. You see what I'm saying? And whether we had odds or whatever, I saw the goodness in him, and God showed me the goodness in this other man. And that's how God started to show me, you know? After I prayed and said, God, and I said, man, there is forgiveness. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, he, 
cussed at me, he did this and that, but I forgive him, Lord God, and I know he's good, he just has a thing with me. Maybe I remind him of somebody or something, right? But he did so awesome at these outreaches that I felt in my heart that I had forgiven him uh, right, rightfully, amen? So we need to do that, right? We need to confront our sin um, in many ways. Let's think about the ways that we're led to sin. How? I mean, there's many ways that we're led to sin, right? But, I mean, number one is temptation. Temptation, temptation, temptation. How do you deal with temptation? How do you deal with it? How do you, I mean, temptation is right there. Well, let me give you an example of how I deal with it right now, okay? So look, temptation is right there, right here. There's two ways you can deal with it. Temptation, right? I know the temptation is right there. I know that it's this or that. Yeah. If I say I'm going to confront this temptation, right? I'm confronting. I'm going to go to it, and I'm going to mess with it, and I'm going to I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Okay. And then you fight with the temptation, and it kicks your butt. Boom, and you fall back into whatever it is that temptation is for you. It could be whatever, right? Okay, well, you can fight it, and you might lose, or you might win, right? You might get drawn in, you might win. Okay, good, that's okay. But this is how I deal with temptation. Temptation is right there. Ready to fight with me, ready to get me in, and I go, I go this way. I run away from it. I stay away from it. I don't deal with it. I don't bother with it. I don't mess with it. I try not to do it, you know, put it into mental gymnastics. I'm gone and run away from it. You can fight it, right? Give me an example. You have a temptation, and this temptation is pornography. Okay? Well, you know, I have a phone, and maybe I can go into the phone, and I can see this stuff, and that stuff, and I'll be fine. The next thing you know, you're, you're doing, you're, you're back in the same sites that you were in before. Well, how do you deal with that? Cancel your data plan. No data on your phone, just text and phone. Just text it and calls. You can do that, you know that? You can get a phone that says, I don't want any data on it. You know, internet data, just just text. <laughs> Let me see this custom one. <laughs> Even if you wanted to watch porn on this, how can you do that? <laughs> you can't. Perfect example. Right? Data, all he needs is data. I'm sorry, uh, text and calls. You run away from it. You don't want to dab with it, right? I mean, that's the way to do I mean, you guys are smart people. Don't mess with it. Right? Those of you guys that have a temptation to drink. Well, it's okay. I can go into that bar today and, and just play pool and eat some pretzels or peanuts and I'll be fine. I'll, I'll leave. Don't walk into the bar. Simple as that. <laughs> you know, Pastor Watt says he goes to drives through a bar on his way home, and he always remembers, man, when he used to go in there and do this and that, and he thanks the Lord. I do the same thing. There's a bar over on him. When we drop off Larry, Larry, wake up. He's asleep. <laughs> Larry. So there's a bar on the way home when, when we drop off Larry sometimes on uh, 51st and Camelback. Every time I pass through that bar, I'm like, Journey's like, are you okay? And she doesn't know what's going on. But in my mind, I remember all the crazy things we used to do in that bar. And I praise God and I say, thank you, Lord, that I don't have any temptation to go into that place. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to try and fight it. Amen? Man, I mean, it's not that hard. We just... We gotta run away from it, right? I mean, if you're a person with an anger problem and you fight and you get into arguments, should it be a good idea that you go to a Raiders and Cardinals game? 
the Cowboys and uh, who fights all the time? It's the Raiders, right? The Raiders always call them fights. The Cowboys, uh, the Cardinals game, and there's drinking and all that. It's probably not a good idea, right? If you're that type of person that likes to get into fights, and, you know, not a good idea for you to hang out at uh, those little, what do they call the fight club thingies that they have? They have those around town. Don't go to those. Right? Drugs. You know, my friends, uh, you can say your friend is, uh, he's still selling drugs. He's still, you know, in the mess. Well, don't go hang out with your friend. If drugs is your problem, well, I can go hang out with him. It's not a big deal, you know. I'm fine. Don't go. Don't hang out. All right? Run away from it. And we know that these things that I'm talking about, these things is what the world uses. This is, these things are of the world, right? This is what the evil one is here to do, is present these things to you. Because he's in the world, and he's in charge of this world. To corrupt people, to, to disorient people, to confuse them. That's his job. Okay? And I want to show you where it says that in the Bible. And I want to show you how we lose our moral character and what three things will keep this moral character out of your life. And it says it specifically, if you go back to 1 John, if you go back to 1 John, where we were at, I lost my bookmark because I gave it to you. <laughs> First John, no, it's okay. It was in the same spot. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Starting in verse 16. And I'm reading out of the uh, New Living Translation. Uh, your Bibles, if you have a King James or NIV, it'll, it'll be a little different, but the New Living Translation of oh, goodness. 2.16 For the world offers you only a craving for physical pleasure. The lust of the flesh. Okay, three things here that are going to keep, keep you from this moral character. Three things that are going to keep you from arete, right? Listen. The lust of the flesh, a craving for everything we see. The lust of the eye, right? The lust of the eye. And the pride of life, which in the New Living Translation says, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. Remember that. These things will corrupt you. This, these things will keep you from your moral character. Okay? Well, how do we confront this? What is the answer to this? How do we live in a... Well, let's look on to Jesus. You know that Jesus went through the same things we did? We did. You know that Jesus was also tempted? And he dealt with these three things? With the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life? Jesus had to deal with this and look at Jesus' answer when he came, when he was confronted by the devil to deal with these things. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Okay, this is how Jesus dealt with these three things. Lust of, the, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and he became very hungry. During that time the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told them, No, devil. Right? The scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Use the word of God. What's he dealing with right there? He's dealing with the lust, with the pride of life. Right? He's dealing, he's dealing with, the, with the flesh. 
I think, well, I, I think he's dealing with the pride of life, right? Because when, we, when, he, when he offers him the bread, he's going to be dealing with the flesh. He wants to fill his flesh. But listen, just, just kind of think about this. He's telling him, throw yourself. If you're the son of God, you're so important. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I, yeah, I'm wrong. For 40, yeah, during that time, the devil came and said to him, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. There we go. He's dealing with the flesh, right? That's the first thing he was dealing with, the flesh, the lust of the flesh. Feel your body, take care of your flesh, right? Tell these stones to become bread, okay? He's dealing with the lust of the flesh. Fulfill your flesh. Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Lust of the flesh. By every word that comes out of the mouth of God, right? I haven't done methamphetamines for, I don't know, many, many years. Ten years. Lord. I did have a one little relapse along the way, like two years after I first quit. And man, that was it. That was the, the one that said, nope, this is not for you. You're done. And bam. Okay? Okay? I have not had any, any feeling of wanting to do it again. It's it's like repulsive. I think about it and I want to throw up. You know what I'm saying? It's like it makes my stomach sick. Right? Right? This flesh, it's only by the word of God. It's only by this word, by these scriptures, that change that, that feeling. I really believe that it's the word of God, that it's the spiritual nature of this book that changed me. I don't know how many people have went through this, but I'm telling you, there was no healing for me. There was no possible healing until this word of God, this truth, the spiritual side of this, filled this body and said, that thing's out. This is what I'm talking about. It's the word of God. It's the living spirit of the holy God that filled that void that I thought needed to be filled. It's the Word of God. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And then the day of the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and he said, If you're the Son of God, jump off! For the scriptures say, He will order His angels to protect you, and they will hold you up in their right hands, in their hands, so you won't hurt your foot on a stone. What's he dealing here? And now he's dealing with the pride of life, right? Mm -hmm. He's dealing with the pride of life. You're the son of God. You're so important. But Jesus himself said, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Amen. You must not test the Lord your God. I'm so important. <laughs> you know? So many people have to deal with this right now. They, they believe that that there's, they don't need God. That, you know, Pastor Wall goes to Mill Avenue every Friday night. And you guys will see doctors out there, right? With uh, their drinking and the doctor. I had a doctor once. Does it look like I need Jesus? <laughs> In my mind, I said, yup. <laughs> In his mind, he thought he, he's got it all done. But what if you die tomorrow? What if on your way home, you get in a wreck, and then what are you going to confront now? What Are you going to need Jesus then? Because the Bible says, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. Do you need Jesus? Oh, wait, maybe I do need Jesus. Okay? There's so many people that, in the world, we don't need. But when it's time, look, everybody in here will perish. We will all leave this life. We will, our bodies will decay or be destroyed or whatever, you know, and and our life will end. It's going to happen. It's a reality we have to confront. It's going to happen. 
Now, I don't want to get to that point and say, oh man, oh man, I forgot, I need Jesus. It'll be too late. Once you're dead, that's it. You're done, right? Amen. Amen. I want to make sure right now, I know that my name is written in the book so that tomorrow if I die, I'm fine. I'm good, right? Amen. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Look, I have comfort in knowing to live, to live in this life, Without knowing Jesus, right, you won't know him in the next either. You won't get an opportunity. Depart from me. Never knew you. Okay? Let's get to know him now. Okay. Pride of life. Jesus responded. The scriptures all say you must not test the Lord your God. Pride of life. Okay? Next, the devil took them to the peak of a very high mountain. South Mountain, right? And he showed them all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give you, I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Lust of the what? It's lust of the eye, right? Lust of the eye. All oh, the goodness that's out there, man. All those fancy cars and those, you know, those more cool houses and those yachts and those boats and things that people have to deal with. They can all be yours. But can you take them to the afterlife? Can, it, can they go with you? No. no. None of that's going to go with you. And who's to know if you're going to live many, many years with that stuff or just a couple of days. Mm. Right? Get out of here, Satan! That's what he said. Get! <laughs> right? You must worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. You must worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. This is how Jesus dealt with this. The lust of the eye. Thus the flesh and the pride of life. The things we have to deal with to live a moral, moral, virtuous, arete life. Right? And then, I love this part. Then the devil went away and the angels came and took care of Jesus. Then the angels came and they hang out with Jesus. Right? They comforted him. Isn't that awesome? Jesus has the answers. The answers are right there. Okay. Well, JC, man, no, you're talking about scripture and how am I going to remember all this? You know, how do I deal with it? I know you've been reading the scriptures and you know where it's at, JC, but. I'm just a man that came into the program, or I'm just a new disciple, and I'm dealing with all this, and you know, um, it's easy to read the scriptures, and but I don't remember then, and I'm not like Jesus. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. The same spirit that gave Jesus these answers are in you. You have the answers too. Okay? Begin to accept that. Begin to believe. Okay? And let me let me tell you how I deal with this. How I deal with this sin nature now versus how I used to deal with it. For those of you guys who say, well, I can't go to the scriptures and I don't remember and I'm not Jesus, blah, 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 blah. Okay, learn. Let's get down to earth. Let's get real right here with with our sin. Let's let's get real. Let's see how we can deal with this. Okay. Alright. Okay. I'm gonna just be I'm gonna get a little personal with you guys here. Okay. There are three phases in how I dealt with sin in my life. Three phases. First phase one. I'm a teenager, you know, I'm young. I mean I my parents take me to church, and I know about Jesus, but I don't listen. You know, I go on and sinning, and I don't care. You know, 
ah, uh, you know, whatever, right? In my teenage years, early 20s, I know I have to be good, but I'm just gonna sin, I like to do this, I like to do that, I'm just gonna sin. Well then you gotta deal with the consequences, because sin will always have consequences, right? Man, you have to deal with some crazy consequences when you do that, right? But you know what? I really believe that God always has that. Because people pray for me. I really believe that. Because my mom prayed for me. And when you pray for people, I mean, God's listening. And I really believe that God had so much mercy on me, you know, because I was just a, you know, rebellious young teenager. I was. I, you know, we did our, we went to church, but man, as soon as we got out of church, we're cussing and acting crazy and doing dumb things and drinking and doing all, just, you know, you know what I mean, right? And that's how I dealt with sin. I didn't deal with it. I just did what I wanted. But the consequences always came. And they came harder. And they came harder. The consequences always opened my eyes. They have to. I mean, if... If you don't learn by consequences, how are you going to learn? I don't understand. You have to learn by consequences, by discipline. God disciplined me. Man, by the time I was in my late 30s, early 30s, I jumped into phase two. Okay? Phase two. God, I know that this is bad. I know that that right there is bad, but God, it feels so good, and it feels good. This, or that, or whatever, right? Man, that feels good, God, and God, I know it's sin, I know it's bad, oh God, but I can't stop, God, I can't, you know? God, it just feels too good, I'm gonna just do it. But now I'm like, you know, I'm kind of like learning these consequences. And then again, you gotta deal with the consequences. You got to deal. There's the consequences keep keep getting worse. And man, in my 30s and early, early mid 40s, I still was in that phase where, oh, I know it's bad. And man, there's a thing in here. I know it's bad to do this. I know, but God, I know you're watching me. I know you're there, God. But I have to do it. It feels too good. Oh. Anybody been in that phase? Don't raise your hand. You're not. I don't know what phase you're in. God, I know. I know that this is so bad, but I have to do it. I gotta do it. Well, you're gonna deal with the consequences, right? Because God loves you, and He will discipline those He loves. Okay. If He doesn't discipline you, feel bad. Nobody wants to be the left out child. I don't want to say the word, right? I want God to discipline me because He loves me and He's my Father. Okay. All right. Phase three. This is the phase I'm on now. Not to say that uh, I've arrived. Not to say that, oh, I'm sanctified beyond measure. All right? But this is where I'm at now. This is my phase. I don't know what phase you're on. But this is what, this is what phase I'm on. God, I know that's going to feel good. Man, oh, it's so enticing, God. God, I know oh, it's gonna it's gonna be all right if I oh God, it feels good if I do this if I do it, God. But I don't want to hurt you, Lord God. I don't want to disrespect you, Father. I don't want to. You've been so good to me, Lord God. You've been so good to me. You gave me a beautiful wife. You gave me a beautiful life. You gave me sobriety. I don't want to touch it, Lord God. No, no, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not going to do it, Lord God. Oh, God, my life is, 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 is beautiful beyond measure because you have blessed me, Lord God. Oh, my, the reverent fear of the Lord that I have for you. It's a reverent fear of my God. I love him. I don't want to do these things because I love the Lord. I love him, and he's been so good to me. You know, it's like a reverent fear. It's not a fear like... You're afraid of the Kukui or, or you're afraid of the boogeyman. No, it's not like that. It's a reverent love. A reverent love. Like, you know, my mom, she's five foot two. Or wait, four foot eight. She's this big. But I'm, I have a reverent fear of my mom. You know, my mom is four eight. 
but she will smack me silly bam if I do dumb things or even insult my wife she will slap me silly but it's because I have a reverent fear of her I love her I don't want to hurt her feelings and my mom's been so good to me and God a million times a million times over loves me a million times over has been so good to me right man that I don't want that's the phase I'm in now am I always going to get it right am I going to be perfect listen my temptations now are different I don't have a temptation for methamphetamines or women or this and that let me I'll be personal right now. I'll be you know what the temptation that came to me the other day this is the temptation that came I'm going to share a little bit look listen the other day um, a job opened up at work it's a new job and basically it's my job if I want it my manager I can't say this wrong. <laughs> anyway so basically all I have to do is write the paper apply for it and it pretty much is my job um, it's it pays really well like really well okay and it has awesome perks man and you will go to day shift I don't have to work nights anymore, but you have to work, you know, Monday through Friday, all day, um, and it will pretty much take me out of ministry, okay? And so here's the temptation. Man, I can really upgrade my life, you know? The lust of the eye, the kingdom, right? I can really upgrade my life, man, by a boat. Go fishing on Saturday and Sunday and Monday when I'm off. Go go hang out at Cabo San Lucas every other weekend if I want to. Right? Take vacations. I don't need to do this no more. Man, that would be so tempting, right? Well, I had to deal with that right there and there. And I said, no. I will stay in my little humble job earn what I have now, right? Continue to do the ministry that I was called to do because God is going to build this church and the gates of hell cannot prevail. Get out of here, Jesus. No. I don't need to go fishing every weekend. I don't need to go cowboy every weekend, right? My wife and I, we both work the same shift. We have the same days off. We can take off every week. And I said, no. Here's why. Because I know God has an awesome plan, and right now in the job that I'm doing, as soon as I dealt with it and said no in my mind, that's it. I didn't go back to it. I didn't. I, I could have a whole week to make the decision. I said no. Boom. Done. Amen. Amen. Done. Don't mess. I ain't gonna mess with it. The temptation's not. That's the temptation that I that had to come into that came into my mind last week, right? For one minute, and I said no. <laughs> Right? No, because I know exactly what I can get into when I'm not doing what God called me to do. I really believe that God called me to do this. And man, there's times in my life when my finances weren't there, and I said, God, I know I can go do this or go do that and have a lot of finances, but I'm going to just wait on you, and I, I know, God, that you will provide, and He has always provided beyond measure. Beyond measure. And I love church on the street way too much to say, no, I'm going to go fishing instead. We'll go fishing for, for men and women. But we're not, you know, I mean, I'll take my days off here and there. We do. But it's not to the point where, okay, I'm not going to do this no more. And we have Saturday and Sunday and Monday off. We can do whatever we want. We can take off. We can do it. No. I'm not even going to think about it, right? Because I know what God has called me to do. And believe me, it's just a matter of time before I'm going to do this full time, right? Um, I don't know how long, but I know that it, it's, it's soon in the future. I will be doing this 100% of the time, like Pastor Wall. Right? But right now, we still I still have to maintain the little humble job that I got at night. I work nights. It helps me to pay my rent and my things. And I know that God's going to provide. God's going to. I know He is. I have. I have a feeling that God's doing His. Whatever He's doing now, He's doing it in His timing, right? That's how I deal with this temptation, right? And then every day, this is the last part. This is seven thirty. It's almost time to go. This is the last part I want you to go home and remember. Okay. 
Every single morning when I wake up, every single morning when I wake up, Lord, help me to live in the Spirit. Yes. Help me, because if I live in the Spirit, today temptation and sin will be diminished. Yeah, it's going to get there, but if I remember to live in the Spirit, and what is the fruit of the Spirit, everybody? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and what? Self-control. Especially self-control. Amen. Amen. Self-control. Control yourself. And this is the, my wife's not here, but I wanted to just kind of, I have no choice but to live in the Spirit, to try and live in the Spirit. You know why? Because every time I see my wife, that scripture is written on her show. It says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Even if I try to be mean to her, I see her arms, and I can't. I gotta walk away. <laughs> right? God is so good. He imprinted that so I, I can't even mistreat my wife ever. Because the scripture is written on her, on her arm. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna close with this. Look, listen. You know the awesome part of this whole thing is? Okay, let me tell you the awesome part of this whole thing is. Whether you're dealing with sin, whether you're dealing with, te with temptation. Because somebody said last week, they were arguing with me about purgatory. <laughs> and man, I diminished that argument like this. I said, I can diminish that argument like this. First of all, nowhere in the Bible, nobody in the Bible, not even Jesus, talked about purgatory. That's right. Okay? Okay? No. So I don't know who came up with that. The other thing is this. I will diminish that right now. You know what? What? With the cross. Amen. Okay? With the cross. The cross is there. Jesus died on the cross so that every single sin, that he would atone for our sins. How disrespectful to say, well, Jesus died on the cross. And he gave his life so that whoever believes in him shall have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life right? Yes. So that whoever believes in him shall have life, eternal life. Right? But how disrespectful to say, well, he died on the cross, but you have to go on standby. He died on the cross, but his death is not enough. You still have to go on standby. You still have to go through this uh, waiting process in this other place. Man, we came into this world oh, destroyed with sin. And the solution was the cross. Yes, one sacrifice, one atonement, so that we wouldn't have to perish if you believe in Him. Amen. The beautiful thing about this whole thing is that the cross, remember the cross, we're going to put a cross up here, Pastor Wong. I was about to say, the cross, but it's not here. It's <laughs> right there. Because of the cross. Okay? How beautiful it is for you to be part of that forgiveness, that grace, and that mercy, even if you're dealing with the temptation and the sin that so easily ensnares us. There's a solution. The cross. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord the praise of Praise the Lord. Let me feel the spirit right now. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Send the law has dominion over you and you become a Christian. It's that simple. And that's all he's sharing. We just, we just need to live it out. And God is working in us, encouraged us to help us. He does it, we can't do it, amen? Amen. Okay, so that's it. If you really got some battles and struggles, you can find some people to pray with you. And you can pray right through it. I'm going to tell you something, you got the God's for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. God, Help us just to be willing and obedient to what you want us to do. For example, like we're talking about our country. We need to stand, make our stand, and be put in our heart for our country. The prayer and vote, whatever, whatever it is it's going to take. 
Help us, Lord. Just submit. Just, let's do it this way. Help us, God, to let you be God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go get it. Thank God to God.